<laughs> Welcome to the family with Alex Brandt Bernard Rasmussen, co host Catherine Brandt, and Andy Brandt Bernard. Let's get Alex's picture popped up there. That'd be good. Well, it was, and then Where all of a sudden it just, it just like reset. I know. Yeah, it does happen. Backstage. There it is. There, there we are. There she is. Okay, I got to mention Here one thing. I even talked about it on the morning show. But we got to get the kids, the whole family, all nine of us. These are <laughs> speaking of kids. Yeah, speaking of kids, he's out there. Um, we have to go to Jade Fountain out in Wyzetta. Mom and I ate there yesterday. Chinese restaurant. I was gonna say it sounds Chinese. Sounds it like is Chinese. Anything fun, Jade though. is always Chinese. Yeah, yes. they love Jade. They do love Jade. I think it's Lucky or something. Yeah. It might be, but it was absolutely delicious. You know, I hadn't been to Jade Fountain in probably 20 years. Yeah. 20, 20, 20. I was going to say five, but mm, maybe 25 years. And this, they have this uh, cashew chicken dish oh. loaded with salt, but so good. Well, of course, they're always yeah. loaded so with salt. It's always a lot of salt. I, I, no it, you know, it's one of those things you taste it. It's like just exactly how you remembered it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yep. nice. Yeah. They haven't changed the recipe. And they don't put any nasty bell peppers in most no, of No, they food. don't. That's good. Yes. No, it was very, very good. But I just, so I said to mom, oh, God, that restaurant's been around forever. It's been around at least like 25, 30 years. No, actually, it was opened in 1968. It's been around for four, what, like 54 yeah. years? Yeah. <laughs> like, there you oh go. My God. I mean, that's back when the suburbs were mm -hmm. remote. Yeah. yeah. Well, it opened up. Did you know why it opened up where it is? No. Because that was a hotel. What? Apparently, that building was a hotel. A strip before. mall? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I hmm. guess so. But yeah, it opened in 1968. It's on its, I think, third or fourth owner now. I know at least third owner. I would hope so. Well, I like Chinese food. So. Oh, Alex, you will yeah, love this it is place. Really good. It's just absolutely wonderful. Lovely. It's absolutely magnificent. Um, I want to run this by you guys. Have you seen this Cola Wars story going on? No. Mm -hmm. Cola Wars? Yep. No. No. Well, the Cola Wars have been going on for a very long time. Yes, yes. they yes. have. The new number two soft drink in America is what? It is no longer Pepsi. The number two? Number two, number one, of course, is Coca Cola by far. It's really? Not even close. It's not Red Bull. That's not, yeah, I, not I don't think that counts as a no might not. soft drink. Oh. No, probably not. It's an like you can't drink. get it. You can't get it from like a yeah. soda fountain. Oh, that's true. Uh, the number Dr. Two. Pepper. Doctor Pepper. I was going to say Doctor Pepper. It is. Pib Extra is better. And Pib extra Pib. mr you remember mr pib yeah mr. now it's pib. called pib extra because it's more extreme i can't do anything Which, for you it's right the same now. thing but world extreme things yeah I, I, like, I like it way better than dr pepper i drank so much dr pepper when i was a teenager i loved dr that pepper was like when i was a teenager choice. it's misunderstood know. though oh yes. it was so good well what is it it's like 16 different flavors I don't know why oh, really? I liked it so much. I, I tasted some, I don't know, a while ago. It's the sweetest. Blah. Not great. Well, yeah, it is very mm. sweet. Have you tried? There's um Dr. Pepper cream soda. No. That is the sweetest thing I have ever tasted in oh, my really? life. Sugar good, in good that. or bad? I really way like, too, um, way too sweet. Oh. I like a, I do like a Coke or a Pepsi once, like <clears throat> two or three times a year. It just sounds so good. Yeah. And it tastes great. And by the time I'm halfway through, I'm so sugared out, I can't drink it anymore. Yeah. When I was recovering from the flu, yeah, oh, for yeah. some yep. reason, I was like, I want cream soda. Yeah. Fe fevers and things, it just seems like you want some like sweet. Cre yeah, I, get, I drank yeah. some cream soda for like two weeks. I was like, I just want a cream soda. Well, an Olipop, the brand. Yeah. Um, I hate it. That's very so sweet gross. Too. What? Ugh. I love Olipop. It's so fake tasting. <laughs> it's very sweet. I love Olipop, but they have a cream soda, and it's. I find it to be delicious. Zevia. It's not. It's not Watch nearly as, please. It's You're not nearly as Thank sweet you. as regular cream soda. The Olipop well, no, cream it's, soda. Yeah, isn't it's got. Sweet it's got as... like stevia and monk fruit and all sorts of other things. But, yeah. Ugh. I like. I love Olipop. We got sage. Picked out a banana cream one the That's other the day. That's the one I bought. Ooh. We have not tried it, and I'm a little scared. I, Ethan liked it. I did not. I, I couldn't even know. finish it. I just. I really it like the Olipop. Uh oh, Nana's going to. Oh no, she's stopping. Bring down the house. Yeah, she's gonna bring the pain. Um, <laughs> she's. I really Nana's like. Nana's gonna bring the pain. The strawberry like vanilla, the cream soda, the root beer, and. I feel like there's one more that I really like. They 
we tried the lemon lime one a few days ago. I didn't like that. No, I don't like lemon lime anyway. No. And Fawn likes Sprite, but she didn't like the lemon lime Olipop. I feel like there's one more Olipop that we like. There's a well, there's a cola one, but Melissa said it's that Melissa basically mm. her rule of thumb is any like fake cola is bad. What do you mean fake? You, cola? you can't like, like if not it's, Coca-Cola. If it's well, no, or if, Pepsi. Yeah, if it's not like you know full sugar cola, yeah. it's going to taste bad because the the sugar is basically integral to the, the taste whole, of yes, cola. Yeah. The whole thing. I, and I've never been like a cola person anyway. Well, she doesn't really drink cola anyway either. But. I've never been a cola person. I always was like Dr. Pepper or root beer, like w those weird ones. Like ginger ale once in a while. Too. Ginger ale, mm. yeah, every once in a while. The and then there's poppy. As well, that's Don't another oh, yeah, Poppy, that's another that. like prebiotic soda thing, and they have some really good ones. There's like their orange one is actually really good. If you like oh. orange soda, I'd mm. say that's worth a try. They sell that at like Holiday. Last time I had an orange crush, my mother. Up? Yep, my <laughs> mother was driving me to see our my our my grandparents in Vesely, Minnesota. Vesely, and all of a sudden I felt like I was going to throw up like instantly. Mm -hmm. Not. Yeah, no, like no, no warning. So I just, I rolled down the window. I barfed out the window. <laughs> yeah, That's nice. Well, she well, she kept on go? driving. She never said a word. Yeah. And when we get there, she, she says, Vesely sure does stink. <laughs> it's because of the vomit that? on your My car. My mother. Oh, and I'm it... like, that's because I threw up. She's like, when did you throw up? <laughs> I mean, she didn't even notice a kid barfing is, outside uh, out the window. That is such a grandma. <laughs> I'm not shocked at all. <laughs> so I had to wash off the car. And you yeah, had to wash the last... off the car. Yeah, she was like, "It's gonna take the paint off." Oh, Noah, how no. are you? Do you yeah. feel okay? <laughs> Do you need to lie down? Oh, right. you're sick. Yeah, it's like... scrub the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my mom. Yes. All business. Yeah. <laughs> All right. One more reference to drinks oh because I don't know why anyone would do this. Do you know what the hot summer drink is now this year? Iced tea. The hot summer drink. No, tar. not iced tea. Tar. No, not not tar either. Uh, what's that called? Four loco. <laughs> I wouldn't do this if you bought me the whole thing over and over and over again. The hot summer drink in America is a shot of booze with a cicada in it. No, it's not. It is, no, too. I don't think that's the hot summer drink. <laughs> it's the I hot think it's summer drink. The and that's the, the attention-grabbing headline is. I was going to say, like, yeah. that's, I'm sure it's something that somebody did on TikTok. And yes, that's, that's, everything's from TikTok. But it's now. not okay, a. I'm going to check on it. I'm going to click think, on like, it just to see. Youth across America are drinking <laughs> Was that your? I have a TikTok a... Uh, story too. Oh, good. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. Great. As soon as you're done with your cicada. Okay, I'm almost done. Americans can turn literally anything into an alcoholic beverage. Here's proof the new hot drink for summer is a shot with a dead it's cicada in not it. Actually, hot. Nobody's a place drinking. in Chicago called Noon Whistle Brewing is serving cicada infused shots of Chicago's famous, what is it, Mallort? Is that how you say oh, it? A Mallort, sir. Yeah. Never Mallort. It's that. that is. What is that? Uh, is this what I'm thinking of? Malort? I think, remember like, <laughs> sound good. I don't know, a year ago, I talked about, I had this like shot of liquor that was like one of the worst things I've ever yeah, tasted. and a bunch of people That's messaged... what it was. It was this. Oh. Malort? Malort. Well, I remember a bunch of people sent in like random liquor things that they're like, this is popular here. And we were like, what? Oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a Swedish thing, of uh, course. But is? it's basically like, I don't know, it's like. Take a chunk of bark off a pine tree and make like the strongest tea you can possibly make out of it. Oh, and then put some rubbing alcohol in it. Yum. Rubbing alcohol that's Malort. Delicious. Oh. Well, this is how they describe it in this story Chicago's famous Malort, a wormwood liqueur that's been compared to citrus flavored gasoline. Yeah, it's <laughs> not far I'm off. Like gasoline flavored things, it seems like. Yes, yeah, yeah for real. It's weird. <laughs> I don't understand I don't know that what either. That's all about. They dump a bunch of dead cicadas into a bottle, so they're infused with all that uh, malorty goodness. Then they pour you a shot and a toss uh, a cicada in the glass. They claim natural flavor of the cicada adds a lot, and that it's reminiscent of succulent lobster. Whatever. I bet. I'm not buying that Pass, one. Pass, Adina. Well, that's I. So you know, 
I don't know if you've heard, but this is like cicada mania year. Yes, it there's is. like yeah. a crossover. One every of, 17 years. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There's a crossover of these two cicadas that only come out every 20 and every 13 years. And they're all out this year and whatever. And there was a video that I saw of a hospital. And I think it was in like New Jersey or Rhode Island or something like that. I mean, the outside the sidewalk completely covered in cicadas. Uh, the yep. walls Nasty. covered in cicadas. Can you imagine the noise? Oh, oh God. They do. What are well, they? They're they, so loud. Didn't they contribute to the dust bowl? Wasn't that part of the dust bowl problem? I think so, cicadas? yeah. They were yeah. Plowing, o plowing in some sort of native grass that kept everything from blowing away. And then there was a huge grasshopper problem. Cicadas well, and grasshoppers are different. Well, I know, but something. Like that. <laughs> what what was the story you were gonna? You yeah, know, oh, a mother's track. unapologetic defense of not returning her shopping cart, a common expectation of social etiquette, yes. drew sharp critiques on social media. I'm not returning my shopping cart, and you can judge me all you want. Dr. Leslie Dobson, a married mom of two, declared in a viral TikTok video. I'm not getting my groceries into my car, getting my children into the car, and then leaving them in the car to go return the cart. So if you're going to give me a dirty look, F off. What do you mean oh, leaving them in the car? They're... garnered over 11 million views, 387,000 likes, and over 100,000 comments, although not all the reaction was positive. The shopping cart is the ultimate lit litmus test for whether a person is capable of self-governing. Mm. To return the shopping cart is an easy, convenient task, but... She said that one of the reasons why she, the reason why she doesn't do it is because there are 265 children abducted in parking lots or carjackings in America, and half of those were sexually assaulted. Oh my God. As a single mom returning your shopping cart, you are prime for a predator to watch and grab you. Her number she appears to like come a from a fact sheet from say. the organization Kids and Car Safety, which reports that indeed, 265 cars had been stolen with children alone inside in 2022. Jesus. So not all in parking lots. Also lock your car. There you I go. was going to say Problem anytime solved. that I've been like unloaded my cart and then the kids have gotten the car, I lock the car, yeah, just yeah. lock the car. And then I do the grocery return, <clears throat> the cart return. Like, you know, I park near a cart return intentionally yeah. when I have yeah. my kids and then I, I'm like, get in the car, lock the car, and I have my keys with me. And then I return the cart and then unlock the car and get in the car. You know what's weird about this? And this happen, happens to me a lot, and I don't know why, but I, I got, woke up early this morning. And I couldn't get back to sleep, so I got up and left and came down here to go for my walk. And I walked down here instead of by home. Mm -hmm. And I was doing my walk, and about... So three blocks from the Cub Foods, that's a block down here. Sure. There was a shopping cart in the uh, beside the sidewalk. Sometimes people take them to the bus stop and leave them. Yeah. There. They leave them at the bus stop? <clears throat> yeah. like uh, A lot of grocery stores in Florida have some sort of governor thing on it. If you leave, oh, really? the, if you leave the grounds, they just seize up. Because but, so many people steal them. Yeah, people in Florida don't yeah. understand that litmus test of returning the grocery cart does not no, apply to no, Floridians. No, no they not. do not You're care. Right. They're like, oh, middle of where people need to drive. They just, just put will, it right yeah, there. It is a, it is amazing how that one of the states with the nicest weather, people won't yeah. walk the th yep. three Seriously. feet. Sometimes it's like literally three feet, and they will not put it in there. I know. I know. It's it is. Amazing. It is very, very strange. Yeah. Sometimes I think maybe it's like elderly people that are just like, like just Floridians. don't have enough left in it's me. Also, a man in Florida. I think it is a man in Florida. <laughs> There's a man in Florida. Every but what a coincidence you would bring up a shopping cart story after I just saw a shopping cart three blocks away from Cub. Well, I know. Well, that's, it's, you're, you, I go to the store with your father. He gathers shopping carts I do that to bring them back. Yep. I do that I too. Do. Um, like if I'll I see take, one I'll out. take one close to me if I'm bringing one back already. But I remember I went to the grocery store with Becky, my one of my college roommates. And there were shopping carts all over the place. And I was like, I had time. So I just started to. Oh, 
What's that? A little scream. There's a red tailed hawk in the a little <laughs> I was like, what was that? It did sound like that's, a red tailed hawk. That's exactly hawk. what it sounded Bing. like. It that did. was strange. That was, a, that was a good I have no idea where that came from. That was your child. Yeah, I have a feeling that was a sound effect in do they have like a tablet or no. something? Oh. Oh. Huh. Hmm. No, I think it was June one of the kids. Snoring? No. Weird. No. Anyway, and I was like, hey, Becky, go grab that shopping cart for me. And she was like, no. I was like, why not? She's like, because it's weird. I was like, why is it weird? What? She was like, why are you dealing with other people's shopping carts? And I was like, because they're just left everywhere. It seemed like a group of maybe teenage kids were like riding around in grocery oh. carts and then like left. And I was like, because they're in the middle of everything. And what are we doing? Right. I, what? She was like, no. Okay. No, I, uh, Andy brought this up, but I have seen people leave it on the outside of the cart. Yep. Park. Literally takes more effort to do that. Than yeah. Just to push it into the corral. Yeah. But. It's that it's a, a leaning against the outside of the corral, not in the corral. Yeah. Well, so I and, think they're making a point. Like you can't tell me what to do. Yeah, probably. He's crawling. Probably. Oh, okay. He's crawling over to his mom. So he's not on camera. That's a good thing. Nice that is a good thing. But I mean, there's all these, I don't know. I don't understand why people do that. I'll never understand why people do that. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, like she said, it also depends. I mean, sometimes if your car is 5,000 degrees, you don't want to leave the kids in there for two seconds to bring the cart over. No, you don't with little kids. Well, you You're right about turn that. the car on. Yeah. But turn the then, AC on. But then it's running, and then you're more vulnerable. I mean, yeah, there's been there's people that are getting carjacked at gas stations. It's just a different it's a different world. I think that everybody now is just like nobody's going to help me. I need to take care of myself and if this is what I have to do, this is what I have to do to feel happy. So I suppose. I guess. I mean, I, all this carjacking and all this stuff didn't happen. I, I mean, I, obviously there were always areas yeah. But, you know, now it's in the suburbs and it's in, you know, the parking lots in uh, in nice places. It's not, it's a different world now. I have a grandson hanging on my leg, so that's, that's working out really well. That's fun. No question about it. I'm letting them do a educational app in 10 minutes, so they'll... Mm. educational app sit yes it's like a summer school it's a homeschool app be much that people calmer. use and i was like you can do that for <clears throat> the last 30 minutes of the <laughs> exactly <laughs> you can do that for the last okay. 30 minutes of the podcast because it's like it's cool they have like they have math and reading and they have internet safety on there that's oh a that's idea. a good idea that's part of it like, that's, yep. right. that's a really good idea Ten hundred minutes. Ten hundred minutes, right. ladies and gentlemen. Yep, perfect. Ten hundred minutes. Or a thousand perfect. something. Um, I have another story to report, but I don't know if I want to do this story with the kids in here. But oh, yeah. um, we had a, a guest on called Frank Figlu Figluzzi. Is all, Figluzzi? It's Figluzzi. Should it be Figliucci? It, it is. Yeah, I was going to say Figluzzi. And I, and I brought it up to him and he said, oh my God, you pronounce it the correct way. Nobody ever pronounces it that way. Figluzzi. Okay. Just watch The Godfather one time yeah, and you'll people get just, it all. He lost best. all his figs. Sometimes. He had figs. And he lost okay, when I use the term S worker, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I just I don't want to say the first word. I don't. the kids. You have any idea? Well, they yes, can't hear me, so sex worker. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I was like, shift worker? Yeah, a shift worker on <laughs> the would, second oh, shift. Is, why would you? Oh, you can That's see his hand. A lot more of those. Hands are fine. Your hand, 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 hand in his forehead. Do you know how many, and he's written a book about this called Long Haul. Fascinating guy. Really good guy. We should have, probably have him on the show at some point because he's he's really good. Do you know how many last year... S workers were. Maybe we shouldn't talk about this while they're in the. Yeah, room. yeah. probably can't. But it's you a literally story. can't even say. Usually, usually, the topic is never good. Yeah. Oh well, yes, when, there is that. Yeah, it's never That's... a happy no. thing. Usually, no. but truck drivers have taken deep. S workers, how many times last year? Long haul Three. truck drivers. I don't want to know. Oh, I'm sure it happens all the time. Oh, I'm, well, it's been happening forever. It's yeah. it has, yeah. Yeah. It's not a smart thing to do. Any idea last year? 
No, I don't, I don't even I can't even think of a possible. It could be a two hundred. It could be fifteen thousand. I yeah, have no I don't idea. really have a sense like, of scale. For yeah, yeah, like no. what I is? Shocked. I have no idea. I was shot. You can't pull on my chair, you pill. Maybe You're running someone my... in the chat listened, and they'll be able to tell us the number. Yeah. I can tell you the number. Oh, you do? Eight, know the number? 850. 850. 850. I mean, that's unbelievable. It's almost three a day, for goodness sake. I mean, goodness. America's Ooh, a big place, though. I mean, but let's see. They were all done in by truck drivers? Well, of course. It's well, like mostly have... going to be truck drivers. Ow. Well, we just drove across America, right? You did. Yes, we did. The amount of trucks on the oh road and the amount of trucks at truck stops and all over the place is yep, absolutely mind blowing. You just are like, how much stuff are these people hauling around? I mean, it's just, there's, uh, we must have seen, I don't even know, 50,000 trucks. Everything is hauled everywhere oh, these days. Be. Nothing is produced locally anymore, so it's just like truck after truck after truck it's of just everything. Amazing how well, many so trucks. There how are. many homicides would you guess take place in America in a given year? In a given year, in a year, yes, uh, fifty thousand. Well, in Minneapolis alone, we're approaching <laughs> what forty. Forty. Um, it's got to be way higher than forty. Uh, just for this year. Oh, it's like so far, like yeah. year to date. Yeah. Oh. Chicago, it's in the hundreds already. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, ten thousand. Uh, it's twenty-one thousand. Oh. So twenty-one thousand homicides every year in America. But despite that, despite that number being you know fairly high, your odds of being killed are point zero zero six percent in any given year. Well, that's it, comforting, I guess. Is it because of the lives they live? Is that, I mean, it's like I the think, sex worker thing I was talking yes, about. Yes, I think well, for the and drugs, very drugs, much the yeah. most part, most homicides are lifestyle based. Oh, one thing I did want to mention, uh, Alex, you where, where do you still park on the side of the building? Yes, generally. Okay, you know, you go down that sidewalk all the way in, there's a stairway you can walk down to get to the building next door. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? The one outside. There's a guy living in there now. Oh, of so course there is. do oh. not uh, go over there. Now, I remember when we first got this place and you're like, oh, I got a parking permit. And I was like, I'm not going down there. No. No. <laughs> I'm still paying for those. I better just cancel you should, them. You should well, be canceling. I told you to do that immediately. That. Well, I can't I'm... use it because I cannot. My car, that ramp down to yeah, the yep. parking. Oh, uh, apparently I'm turning off. There we go. The ramp down to the parking when it's icy, I cannot use that ramp. It's way too steep. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm. I gotta check and make sure that I'm, I'm not still paying for those then, because you know. Yeah. I don't think I am though. Am I, Catherine? I have no idea. Oh, I thought you checked the the monthly deal. Here. I didn't see it like broken down. Yeah, I don't. I I don't think I still do pay for them, but I can send them an email. One of those situations. All right. What are you reading over there? My my phone keeps saying that I'm on Do Not Disturb, and I'm trying to figure out where that is. And I have turn it off. Auto Do Not Disturb on during the podcast. So it's I probably... do not. The only time I have Do Not Disturb is from eleven to seven a.m. and when I'm driving my car. Huh. And I'm not doing any of those things. So where the heck is it? Uh, I'll give it to Alex. She can find it. Alex will take care of it. Exposure notifications. What's that? Public health authority. Oh, for God's sake. I don't want the public health authority to know who Some, I am. Someone with COVID was within 10 miles of you. Yeah. Did you hear that Fauci now said that he made up the six? Yep, the six foot thing isn't real. Well, that it was just like some random thing that he just made up. Yeah, he made it up and it never worked anyway. Well, social distancing. Isn't, isn't it true that if you sneeze, it travels like 20 feet or something? Yes. Well, it depends on what you mean by it. Because, you know, there's viral particles and that sort well, of thing. Well, when you sneeze, the droplets carry on, I think, like 20 feet. Yeah, if you just sneezed up and at, at If you face just height, sneezed yeah. in the, in the, into the air, which yeah. you see people yep. do all uh, of the time, yes. unfortunately yes. and sadly. Up to 25 feet. Yeah. 25 so feet. six feet's nothing. Oh, but, I mean, if someone's sneezing into the air, then there's nothing you can do to protect yourself from that. No, or a cough. That's like someone trying their hardest to spread a disease at yeah, that I point. I don't know how far a cough goes, but it's probably more than six feet if you're just coughing into the air. I mean, I see people do that all the time now. You think after COVID, have we learned nothing about just simple basic hygiene? 
Just cough and sneeze think. into your sleeve. So after he did, he did, he he's in court right now for this, is he not? Or an investigation? Uh, Rand one? Paul is going after him. I know Rand Paul's Rand always Paul going thinks after him. that. Fauci caused the entire COVID problem. Well, they invented the disease, first Which of all. Which is amazing because Fauci is a godlike hero to mm -hmm. a lot of people. Well, he was. People don't really talk about him so much oh, anymore. Oh, well, during COVID, he was a god. Now that the narrative is collapsing, he's he never existed. Well, again, Andy, am I right? They invented that disease in China, correct? And That's yes. what everything is pointing to. And was, Americans were part of that. It was manufactured. Manufactured is a better mm -hmm. way to put it, yeah. So they manufactured a disease. How, how many people have died of COVID now on Earth? I mean, we'll never know the true number. That's probably true. No, too. we will in about 20 years. Masks never did work. That was just to sell product, basically. You know, that was so amazing because I remember... I remember having an argument with somebody about masks and I said, masks don't work. I just saw a study that yep. masks don't work, especially yep. wearing them all day long. Yes. You know, um, and he argued and argued and within five hours, social media had wiped it, wiped it off well, the of course, face yep. of the earth. That Can study people... that said that they don't work. Oh, they took it away. Wiped it off the you face of the earth. You still see people wearing masks. I know. I just why Masks they don't work have never been to protect you. No, you have never in history have worn a mask to prevent yourself from getting sick. Well, they have always I mean, been designed to prevent you from getting other people sick. Right. Which is what in Asian countries, if you're sick, you're supposed to wear a mask. Yep. Right. You don't wear a mask because people are sick around you because it doesn't work. But what about a surgeon? Why does a surgeon wear a mask? So they don't get their patients sick. But if masks don't work. Well, but they, they prevent you from getting other people sick. Okay. But they don't prevent you, you from, from getting, getting sick. sick. Yeah. Plus all the gross. Because you don't really, I mean, like. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. Like the, uh, the whole thing about like someone sneezing or coughing into your face and you inhaling it is basically not real. Mm -hmm. I mean, like maybe like if you have a toddler or something, they'll do that, but. That's not how people get sick. People get sick by touching surfaces and then touching their face. And a mask isn't really going to help with that very much. Yeah, I know a guy that says that he's never, ever sick because he keeps his hands clean. Yep. And that's how that's kind of how I am. I, before I had Ethan, I was never sick. I got sick maybe once every five years because I washed the hell out of my hands. That's a good idea because most people I just found out from Kristen Burt. Thank God. Kristen Burt had to expose me to this filth what? that most young white people do not take showers properly anymore. What do you mean properly? Uh, they think if they wash their upper body that it runs down into their you know, nether region and their legs, and therefore that's getting clean too. Huh. They literally talked uh, about this. How Stupid. obtuse are you well, i well, know I mean, like are I we mean, talking it's... about like teenagers because teenagers have never had really good hygiene but uh, they tried to tell us and tim lammers can jump in on this because he's on now <laughs> but we talked about the fact that it's specifically white people that sounds fake though. i couldn't agree more i argue that this is total yeah. anytime it I don't know, singles out it's... white people i gave me a teenager oh, yeah. that you know it, it doesn't matter who you are if you're a teenager i could see that yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's teenagers. Yeah. Teenagers are gross. That's just how they are. I don't know. If you think some about it, you know, create more divide or something. If you just That's spent enough. the first 12, 13 years of your life never really having to worry that much about getting clean because it's like, you know, you haven't gone through puberty yet. Right. Now, all of a sudden, you have to work a lot harder at getting clean. You know, it makes sense know, that you're but, not going to do a very good job for a while. But like that age group, they're all mean to each other if someone stinks. They right? just wear Axe body spray. That is true. <laughs> yeah. that is true. You don't need More to give apt. them another reason to, to tease you. you right. Because they'll find anything yeah. already. So yeah, That's a good point. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Lammers joining us. little, I guess, entertainment news is a good one. Yeah. I, I need you to help me figure something out. I'm, I, I was coming back from a screening last night. Bad boys. Ride or die. We'll oh, talk more God. about that. Ride or die. Ride or die. <laughs> Will Smith's big comeback. Anyway, we'll talk about that yeah. more, on, uh, wow. more on Friday. But um, I'm playing music, and I'm trying to think of the. Uh, I, I I watch. Um, 
I wasn't, you know, I, I put on through my speakers, through the Bluetooth, just YouTube, and then just listen to the audio. Wasn't watching videos while I was driving. Good. <laughs> Thank you for that. I do Good. see people. Uh, do um, oh, yeah. but, okay. So I, okay. So here's my playlist. Boz Skaggs. Nice. Um, Natalie Cole, nice. Whitney Houston, and Dionne Warwick. Okay. Those four songs. Okay. The thing with YouTube videos is they have like pre-roll ad before each one. Oh right. yeah, yep. And I think two of the four of them were for Colagard, and I'm thinking uh, Colagard. <laughs> is, this the, is this the? Is this trying to tell me something? Is this the algorithm thing saying, "Okay, you're an old person, listen to"? Older <laughs> yeah. Music. Oh, believe me, it's an algorithm. Every oh my year. God! It's like, okay, why do you try? Forget it. I had a colonoscopy a couple of years ago. I don't need to skip past. Okay, I don't want to go through that again. And and mm -hmm. uh, Colagard is the easy way out, I'm sure. But it's like, what what is yeah, that? Why don't you just poop in a tube and send it off? <laughs> why? I'm just listening. It's like, what are these commercials trying to tell me about my listening tastes? <laughs> uh, you know? Goldie oldies. Yeah, golden oldies, I guess. Yeah. But you know what? Great music. You can't beat it. Oh, isn't yeah. that the truth? I mean, some when we were driving back from Florida, we were like, I mean, just listening to these voices, like like you said, Whitney Houston. I mean, mm -hmm. unbelievably fabulous voices. Mm -hmm. And you listen to the newer artists. Some of them have good voices, but oh, most yeah. of them do not. Not, many. not like that. They don't you have that soulful, have... wonderful range. Yeah. Well, because... I have to throw Adele in there too. Adele was part of that list. Oh, too. Adele, absolutely yep. wonderful yep. singer. But because you you mentioned you know today's singers, and it's really kind of rare. I mean, you you oh. get a lot of auto tuning kind of things going yeah. and you listen to if you watch any programs even the you know the the music that opening up a program it's like this these whiny whiny voices yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> what is this why does anyone want to listen to this can you see, remember awful. when Christopher Walken came in in that. I'm sorry, I'm swatting away a mosquito. There you Christopher go. Walken came into the studio. I want more cowbell. More well, cowbell. Now, now more you got. Cowbell. I want more whiny. More whiny. Oh, they're yep. just so whiny. That's the thing. Well, I remember uh, 20 ish years ago when I was in high school, the big thing was emo. Yeah. And that was all whining. Yeah. It's just whining well, it's about how hard life again. is. And yeah. yeah, but that's, yeah, it's every so often. But I mean, like, 20 years before that, I mean, what, what was like the whiny phase before emo? There was, there has to have been one. Like, I just want to pay attention to Are you talking about emo it. Phillips? No. Yeah. Emo. The, the Emotional. brand of music. Yes. Oh, it's called emo. It's called I didn't emo know for that. emotion. Yeah, well, men, oh, yeah men were whiny. Women were whiny. Everybody yep. was whining just all the time. Whining. And in terms of dress, it's all like black clothes and yeah, oh, yeah. Makeup and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff yeah there was it's basically it was basically like goth but lamer well and what's interesting about that is you know you, you look at the world and we need some positive influences oh, we don't need you, got you know right. we got mass lots of lots of suicides we have a lot a lot of division and, mm -hmm. and now and the music's whiny it just makes you want to go jump off a bridge well, it's, it's not how, terrible that's not how kids operate though when they feel sad they want to listen to sad music i was never like that i never mm. listened to sad music because i was like why would i want to depress myself well but and that was that's how most kids are that's the great part about the 70s and the 70s music and you listen to that stuff and in good tunes you know i mean i it's just I don't, I don't know. I mean, like you had Johnny Cash. He did a lot of mopey music. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking pop music. I mean, yeah. yeah, Cash. Yeah, country western generally is. Yeah, country was very whiny for a long time too. <laughs> was it really? Well, Johnny Cash, all he did, I hurt myself. Today. It's like, <laughs> cheer up. I Jesus. fell into a burning ring of fire. Ring of That's fire. true. Yeah, name a positive Johnny Cash song. <laughs> my <laughs> wife left me. My dog died. Yeah, yeah. he was kind of the start of I'm that. I'm an whole alcoholic. Thing. Yeah. Oh, the good stuff but elvis was always positive right except for blue christmas i guess yeah yeah well you know <laughs> um in terms of movies and i i Catherine, the last couple of weeks couple three weeks because i guess 
if imaginary friends came out three weeks ago uh, and last yeah, I went week and saw that with uh fun i don't know where she went uh, yeah, yeah i don't um, know she's must have been, it must have had to go to a bathroom <laughs> run must have. Um, but she said it was great yeah it was it was and and so you had if and then uh mad max uh furiosa What's came that? out uh last weekend or two weeks ago and then last week, because I missed Garfield and critics were crapping all over it, but it was yeah. almost, almost the number one movie. Now, this past weekend, it is the number one movie. The thing that I was pointing out to Tom on the Friday morning show was the fact that, first of all, why are critics crabby about if? Why are they crabby about Garfield? This is nothing but positivity. And that's why I think both films are great. So I, I don't know. Are people? Do they just want to be pissed off? Do they want to be crabby? I don't. Yes. Yeah, maybe that's our baseline now. These movies. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe that's just our baseline yeah. for everything is just angry be... people want to be more angry because it's you know it's a feedback loop. Yeah. Well, did. did our political groups or political parties Ugh. start all this? Yes. They did it on purpose. I don't know. I mean, I think it doesn't help when your leaders are all bashing and oh, yes, breaking every law yep. and acting like fools all the time. I doesn't. Yeah. I don't think that helps. Well, well it's so amazing that Hunter Biden thing. Even if he's found guilty uh, and could do seventy-five years in prison, his dad's going to just waive it. Oh, so absolutely. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Well, and what judge is going to put the son of the sitting president into jail? Oh, yeah, forever? he'd be he'd be mysteriously found dead oh, a week later. Yeah, so. you know that they would just be ruined. Yeah, they put a former president, and they're, they're trying to put a former president in jail for the first time in history, and half half the com the country's happy about it. Yep, very very happy. About I'm, it. I'm seeing a lot of people, even fairly far left people, saying this is a huge mistake. It is a huge mistake. Well, when's it? When is lawfare going to end? That's that's, that's the thing is it doesn't. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole thing. It's like if you can, you know, if they can do that to him, then they can do it to anybody. You send one of ours to the hospital, we send one of yours to the morgue. Yep. Right. But, except instead of the hospital and the morgue, it's prison well, and more prison. Uh, it it reminds me of what you're saying, uh, Andy, is what Sean Connery said during The Untouchable. <laughs> that's he exactly what he said, yeah. You bring a gun. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the Chicago way. Yep, exactly. And that <laughs> is <laughs> what's... dog. <laughs> well, that was good, Will. Right, huh? I had to, you know, I saw the opening for Sean Connery mm -hmm. show. It's like, first of all, you kind of got to get into that Scottish thing and yo, the man, dog. <laughs> but but uh, um, now, dog. Yeah. So no, no. But seriously, it is just that's that's kind of the way of the world now, isn't it? At least politically, it is. Where it's okay, you know, at some time the balance of power is going to tip the other way and they're going to do the same damn thing that I one know party out. No. Well, you know why Reagan won up and up, and up in a landslide it was because he was he was bringing back nostalgia. Yeah, absolutely. You know, where <laughs> apple pie and America and bands down the street that, yeah. that's how that's why we, that's how he won. So maybe we'll have yet another person like that, I don't know. I mm -hmm. I can only hope so because right now it's just it's getting worse and worse and worse. It and is. I'm not talking about one side or the other. They're all complicit. Yeah. Everybody, it's just a giant pissing match right now. Well, I know. And it, it's gotten to the point where it's like the left is so obsessed with Trump that they're turning him into a martyr. Yep. That's yeah. exactly what's happening. So, no matter how you feel about Trump, they're, I think they're shooting themselves in the foot for that. All they're doing is empowering a base is what they're doing. Exactly. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And then and then if Trump does get reelected, they're going to just keep making up things and going after him because they're they're obviously they're they're almost like deranged rabid dogs at this point. They just can't let go. They just can't uh, stop. And well, you know, do anything and then and nothing happened to the people that made up all the stuff in the first place, which did derail his presidency, if you ask me. Right. I mean, they're just going to do it again. So we're just going to live through if he gets to be president again, it's going to be four more years of all of that. Again, they're not going to stop. I well, mean, it's been proven over and over that they're not going to stop. Oddly enough, uh, the Cannes Film Festival 
uh, there was the debut because people got to remember the Cannes Film Festival is not all about red carpets. They make it about fashion and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah. But the main reason for a lot of these film festivals is for films to find distributorship because it costs a ton of money to distribute yeah. the film. In fact, Francis Ford Coppola is still looking for a U.S. distributor for Megalopolis, which he sunk $120 million of his own money into. Ouch. Um, but another film looking for a U.S. distributor and has not found one yet is a movie called The Apprentice, which is not about Donald Trump's show, but it is about Donald Trump as a up-and-coming real estate developer and his um, relationship with his lawyer, then uh, Roy Cohn. Uh, so Roy it's Cohn. kind of weird. Uh, how is it, Roy Cohn? It's Michael Cohn. No, Michael, Michael Cohn is doing no Roy Cohn, C O H N. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. sorry. His his uh, lawyer at the time, um, and so he is obviously not painted as much in a negative light as he is now uh, with this film. But Sebastian Stan, who is Bucky, uh, what the hell is his name? The Winter Soldier in those uh, Avengers movies plays Donald Trump. And, and again, you would think that a movie about Trump would sell. And it hasn't. Which huh. is sort of weird, but you, you know, just look it up. Google it. The apprentice. Uh, yeah, it's called The Apprentice. A uh, Donald Trump uh, movie about the young Donald Trump and the guy uh, Jeremy Strong from Succession. Uh, Kendall, remember you saw Succession, right? Yep. The yeah, we're, we still, watched, we're still watching, still watching it. it. Yeah, yeah. He plays he plays uh, Roy Cohn. So it's it's an I haven't seen the movie, but it's like it's it's just interesting to me how some films just cannot be. I don't know. They I don't know what you would think there would be some sort of appeal there, but. Maybe the movie isn't negative enough. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the, the way the plot is synopsized here makes it sound like a Star Wars sequel. Trump's decency is eroded as he learns the dark arts of t deal making and tastes power. Oh, God. Yes, yeah, let the money flow through. You. <laughs> well, you would think that anything that would paint him in a bad light would get would sell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, it didn't sell. It's well, still the problem is the that you can't just be negative overall you have to be entirely negative if he's depicted as a human being who becomes evil you're still depicting him as a human being and that's not mm -hmm. acceptable oh, there you go. he has to be born evil and he has to die evil <laughs> oh god <laughs> just so sad well, so even like darth so vader born. was born a good guy that's true darth vader that's was good, good until he was yeah that's until true. he slaughtered the sand until people he was corrupted by uh emperor uh senator turned palpatine. emperor palpatine mm -hmm. and i think that they're kind of trying to make the roy Cohn character here as the palpatine and he's the young mm -hmm. you know that, again just as this is just going by what i've read again i haven't seen it i do get to see movies on occasion that are playing at festivals that um haven't been picked up yet but not this one and i would really love to see it and and uh the reviews were pretty positive about the film. And again, the reviews are, are interesting because again, you're right. It doesn't, it's like a, he maybe is more humanistic in this film or something, hmm. you know? So it, it's, it's not like a, a political hit job, I guess is what I'm saying. Because again, it has nothing to do with his political career. Maybe, maybe that's why it's like, well, if this were a movie that were painting him during his political career, then somebody would have snapped it up immediately. Sure. You know, I have heard from other people and I don't know, cause I never checked, but I've heard from, from both people or both sides, excuse me, that both Donald Trump and Joe Biden are masters at stiffing people and not paying their, their bills. <laughs> Like Donald I Trump. the president would be uh, anybody would charge him for anything anyway. No, but I mean throughout their lives. Like oh, when wow. Trump was building all that stuff. Uh, somebody told me a story about it down in West Palm Beach. He, he built this golf course and he had all these all these trees removed and all the rest of it. And they removed all the trees. And Trump apparently stiffed him for the four hundred grand it cost. Oh, to remove I them. I remember seeing an interview with, about that. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, they were you know because it 
I, I guess he's done that before. Yeah, that's what in I Atlantic understand. City, apparently, he didn't yep. pay somebody a whole yep. ton of money. He's like, I don't pay for shoddy work. Mm. Oh. Well, it's like uh, what Bill Gates said in The Simpsons. It wasn't actually Bill Gates, of course, but <laughs> what he said was, I didn't get rich by writing a lot of checks. <laughs> there you go. That's about it. And it's true. The richer you are, the more likely it is you'll stiff people. Yeah. Well, isn't it exactly? And that kind of it, it kind of the same thing with with movie stars or whatever. They just they're so famous yeah. that they don't feel like yeah, they're used to getting everything for free. Right. And and I told this story before, but uh around the time he, and he actually was in town doing interviews, and I think he was in the KQ studios. Uh Jeremy, what the hell's his name? I'm gonna have to look Piven. Piven. Oh. oh ish. Oh. <laughs> and he came in to a restaurant and with a big entourage, so to speak, because he was in entourage, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh and uh he <laughs> you're gonna love this. He didn't tip the waiter with money. <laughs> Oh no. no! This is in Minnesota. He did this? no, no, not here. But oh, he was good. here, and I know his behavior was suspect. And I think he yeah. skipped Sansevier on an interview or something. Um, but anyway, he tipped the waiter in this restaurant. I think it was in L.A. Uh, with uh, DVDs of Entourage. Oh, <laughs> oh my, my God. God! Oh, I hope that's not true. <laughs> it is true. It wow. is. True. Look it up. Look it up. Oh, I'm gonna lowest and below, really. <laughs> you're making well, hundreds here, of here. dollars and you can't even tip a waiter. That's yeah. Just, uh, just, that you, is just you gotta Google that, Andy, because I, I know it's true. I've read the story. I've talked about it before. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Uh -oh. A story from 2007. Uh, oh, he denies it. He says of he does. it's completely false. Liars. Uh, the meal in question was part of a cast dinner for Entourage. Mm. Paid for by HBO. So, oh, well, it's uh, still. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, but then he self-aggrandizes to the point where I start doubting anything he says. Yes. Oh. He says, I literally don't know how to add a 15% tip. I've never done it. I have to give them a 20% tip. What? Like he's physically incapable of tipping less than 20% because he's just guy. such a good guy. Yeah. Right, he's it. saying he doesn't know how to do math. Well, but he also, he says he doesn't tip less than 20%. What I love is. Well, yeah, maybe now, maybe after to, that. You go to the Asia mall, right? And you order your mochi donuts and your bubble tea or whatever. Mm -hmm. Your, your mm -hmm. boba. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's like, what are you, what are you tipping? I know. 18, 20 or 25. Yeah, <laughs> I know for like it's for like, bubble tea, I always give them a dollar. What's, like coffee, why bubble are tea, you tipping twenty five percent on a kiosk? Every point for, of sale kiosk yeah, is built is, like that. Now. Yeah, you yeah. have yeah. you can choose your own. Which yeah, like, like I've gone to time. places. I've like rented tools where there's a tip at the end. It's like <laughs> to rent a tool yeah. <laughs> because it's just built into the point of sale machine, and you have yeah. to go in and yep. manually disable it. If you don't know to do that, it's going to ask your customers for a tip. Uh, pretty soon you're going to get your uh, brain surgery bill with the t oh, yeah. custom tip, oh, please. Yeah. Probably. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. There's no, a no, ton no. of stories about this tipping thing on here. And I guess, you know, the internet can turn it into this 12 headed uh, into a Hydra, right? Yeah. And it just, it gets bigger and bigger. But, uh, you know, obviously, if he it got to the point where he had to address it, but then this whole thing about, well, I wouldn't know how to tip 15%. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, we, like had him in, story. we had him in studio a couple of times. One of the biggest pricks I've ever met in Whoa. my life. Oh, what a horrible person. That's, that's saying <laughs> something. He, he comes in, the guy who's driving him, just, you know, just, I said, just have him come in the studio. It's not a big deal. Sure. So during the show, I'm talking to his driver, asking him on the air a couple of questions about this, you know, because it's kind of, Interesting job driving famous people around. Right in the middle of me asking the question, that idiot goes, hey, hey, what are you doing? Talk to me, not to him. This oh. is about me. Mm. Like, oh, God. Nobody stop. else is interesting except for me. I'm the only interesting one. Nice. Jeremy Piven, what a horrible human being. Didn't he, like, well, diddle the kid or something? Well, I don't know if we want to make. I don't know. Yeah. I go down that route now. I, no, I thought he did. 
Didn't I don't, he get in trouble no, for that? So. I don't think so. Who am I thinking? Uh, you're of? thinking, well, I mean, Kristen has said that he's like kind of creepy to oh, he her friends. Creepy. He has an, a sexual assault allegation against uh, a few people, but they appear to all be adults. So there you go. Who am I thinking of? Is there another Jeremy mm -hmm. that got in trouble for that? Uh, Jared from Subway. Well, no, well, he did, didn't he? I don't think that's yes. But no, he's in prison. He's, he's in, in prison. Yeah, he he, is, he was like, yeah, distributing CP. I think. Really? Oh. I believe so. I'm, Yikes! Oh God, I've never. Uh, yeah, he. There is a documentary on uh, Discovery. It might be an Investigation Discovery uh, about that. Jeez. And it's a three part deal, and it is difficult. It is so difficult to watch. He's yeah, going to be, bet. let's see, he was uh, 15 years in 2005. So, six more years, he'll be a free man. Really? Well, you know, these documentaries, too. I mean, it just kind of shows you how people glom on to celebrity or whatever. Yeah, they're they sure talking do. about fans. I mean, I'm sure that was part of his deal, but I'm talking about. The number of photos they've shown throughout with all these big stars that are hanging with them with pictures. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. It's just crazy. And then underneath it all, this stuff is going on. And there was somebody that knew something was off. So she started working with the police undercover and got tapes of him talking about this stuff. I mean, it just, I mean, these documentaries are fascinating, but there's sorts of things that you just feel like crap after watching because it's so gross uh it's kind of like the army hammer thing too you know they're, they they get a lot of those sorts of documentaries on there um i think it's id discovery in fact well it was the same one that did that uh quiet on set documentary did you see any of that i saw a couple of the episodes yes yeah yeah it just you don't oh it's just terrible yeah. stuff and after you watch it, it's like oh my god i why this is not entertainment but no you know, yeah. it, it certainly captured a lot of people's attention. I mean, it was a big deal for what was it, a couple months ago. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, 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 guess what? Dad is watching a um, science fiction movie or show Fallout. Fallout and liking yeah. it. I don't uh, like you're watching Fallout. And liking huh? it. And we've never played the game. Well, no, I, you don't. I wouldn't expect you to have. <laughs> no, I didn't either. And I and it's just one of those things. Fallout. And. Maybe that's why I like these sorts of shows better than a lot of uh, people who play video games do, because I don't know the nuances of it. In yeah, way. there is something to be said for not having played the games and going with expectations. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, but Ellie, it had to have cost a fortune to, to I'm film sure it God, did. Yes. I will watch anything Walton Goggins is oh. in. Yeah, I he's so him. good. He's really good. Yeah. He I know. Is. Do you think he's really gone? From that, I mean, the last episode didn't look good for him. No, it did not. That's true. I hope he's not gone. Uh, I, I there's no him. way they can't it's get coming rid of him. back. And yeah, never say never. Uh, yeah, he he's a terrific actor, and I know we've talked about it before, but my God, the righteous gemstones, baby <laughs> Billy Freeman. <laughs> phenomenal show i just you just watch that show and you're like what did she just say i mean <laughs> what are these people saying bible bunkers with baby billy freeman Bill, baby <laughs> want to be on the tv <laughs> that's this whole thing he just wants to be on the tv and it when his the way he was introduced in season three singing uh by the pool you get this yeah. idea that he's really got this big Broadway show deal going on around him, and, but yeah. then it cuts to reality, and they're like three people, and they're <laughs> like diving a body, in, uh, like a body in the pool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God, is he funny though? Oh, it, 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 a show like Fallout shows you just how versatile of an actor the guy really is. Yes, yeah. As well in in gemstones and then he goes to fallout is like totally different vibe you know totally oh, yeah. different vibe and that makeup that they must mm -hmm. oh my gosh i wonder how long it takes them to make him up with that gross oh god i'm sure it's skin it's and no be like nose six how hours do, every, i think you're right in how does how do they do that how do they make him look like he doesn't have a nose ask michael jackson no, I mean seriously. <laughs> yeah. Every day they cut his nose off. Is and it? Then they is sew it, it a, back on. Is it CGI that they? I mean, do they no, no, it's makeup. If you mound enough makeup on there, I mean, I guess. God, can... it really does look like he doesn't have a nose. Mm -hmm, it it's does. really weird. Uh, Mike for Blaine wants to know if you have seen hundreds of beavers. 
Uh, no, I have not. I what, what is that even? It's a uh mil it's a slapstick comedy film directed by Mike Cheslick. Uh and it's inspired by 1920s and 30s slapstick. Mm. So well, I can yeah. tell you this much. I, I couldn't get my wife within a hundred years of watching something like that because she hates slapstick. No, Lauren. I love slapstick, and I think it, oh, yeah. it goes back to the whole Three Stooges thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's, yep. it's it's supposed to be like a revival, and the poster looks like it was drawn in that old style. When did it come out? Uh, 2022. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, it's about check that out. Yeah, it's about. Uh, is it actually funny? A salesman who has his farm destroyed when a bunch of beavers start eating it. <laughs> okay, well, there's a good place <laughs> to start. Original, it's original, right? Yeah, okay, I like that. But uh, yeah, no, I don't. I don't know. You know who else is really big into the slapstick, and you can tell by his films, at least the Evil Dead films. It's uh, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell with the oh yeah Dead stuff. Yeah, total, the, mm -hmm. total Three Stooges. In fact. Um, they call their extras fake shemps because when the three stooges, uh, when, uh, yep. which one of them died, uh, and really? then Shemp, uh, and then yeah, Shemp died, really. they mm -hmm. brought in yeah. actors who looked like Shemp, but weren't, were, it was totally off. They were called fake Shemps. They, they called them fake Shemps. So now they call their extras fake Shemps. Uh, that's how much they're into the three stooges. and so Shemp and left. Then Curly had a stroke. Shemp came back, then died. Yes. And then, well. Yeah. So they had some problems for a little while there. but uh, And then, yeah, Joe Palma stood in to complete four Shemp, or, uh, Shemp era shorts. But, you know, it was obviously not Shemp and people were mad. And yeah. So forth. It's a hell of a story. All right, Timmy, we'll talk to you on Friday. Friday with Bad Boys Ride or Die. We'll get it taken care of. That's going to do it for the show today. We will talk to you tomorrow. Reminds me how you talking